I'm here with Eddie Mapp. Eddie Mapp is front of house for a band called? Pantera. Pantera, man. Well, first off, thank you so much for having me here. Really, thank, thank you. you so much. Uh, it's an honor to actually be sitting here. I have a lot of friends who, uh, who look up to you and aspire to be you one day. So just to be able to be sitting here and be able to talk with you is just, it's, it's, it's really awesome. So thank you for having me here. You're welcome. Uh, I'm going to start off with, how did you get into running sound? Did you just wake up out of the womb? We, Mixing, ready to go. Yeah, shortly after. I mean, <laughs> shortly after. Um, well, I, I think maybe growing up, um, when I started getting into music, I think I was seven, and uh, I grew up in a musical family. All my uncles and parents and everybody would all, they would always go to concerts and stuff, and that was the fun thing to do. And so, uh, yeah, I think I was eight when I went to my first show, um, and then absolutely loved it and I just loved the experience and all of that and so I started playing drums started playing guitar um, and was in the studio while we, we I think we were nine or ten first time and then uh, just played through high school and at the end of that um, not sure what I wanted to do my dad suggested a recording school in Arizona and so we uh, looked into that and which school the conservatory of recording arts and science oh cool so I went there um, uh, a week after I graduated high school it was a four-month course, okay. um, and then I got back home, and right as everyone else was leaving for college, I was like, let's work, let's do this thing. So I just jumped straight into it, and a couple of years later, I got picked up on a tour, and then uh, left, and then never looked back. That's so, awesome. Yeah. All right, tell me about your first tour. Who was your first tour? My first tour was with a band called Clearlight. Okay. Um, it was a... Uh, just van and trailer tour. Okay. And it did was, you drive as well? Uh, I did drive. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I was working at a production company, and had just decided whatever the next thing that comes along is, I'm doing that. Mm. And that night, Jimmy Bauer called me and said, "Hey, do you want to come on tour? You don't get paid. You know, we'll feed you." <laughs> but at the same time, I got to go on tour, and that started the whole thing. And so I gave my two weeks' notice the next day, and then two weeks later went on tour. And then, uh, and that was in '99. The second two-week tour with them was a couple months later. That's when I got asked to go to Europe with Crowbar. Um, and then this is all front of house, right? This is all front of house. Okay. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, I've never done monitors, anything else, just front of house. And uh, I don't know how ORF works. Right? Uh, <laughs> And then uh, midway through that tour is when Kirk, the singer for Crowbar, who's also in Down, okay. um, and uh, asked me to go on uh, if I wanted to go out with them, opening up for Black Label with Zach Wild. So then I said yes. Of course, so then, but, uh, obviously. <laughs> and midway through that, um, his front of house uh, engineer had to leave for another gig, and so I filled in and stayed there for four years and ended up working live and in the studio with Zach for four years. Um, so you've done the dark side as well. We, you know, that's where, that's where I started. I mean, I started in, and I started in the analog studio. Like nowadays, Pro Tools, I don't have quick, I don't have mad editing chops or anything because it was two inch and, you know, 24 track. You have to do the cutting and the taping? Yeah, all yeah. of it. Yeah, you know, that's that, a lost art now. You know, it's, but that's, it's almost the same approach that I do with this. It's the same, it's laid out the same way. Yeah. So, yeah, I just love the analog feel and that whole thing. So I guess that's how I got started. And it, I guess instead of playing, my performance has become more of this. Yeah. What was your, uh, do you remember what your console was in the first tour? Uh, let's see, on <coughs> the, the first tour that I actually carried a console um, was on OzFest, uh, and we all had to use the show console. Um, the first Okay, the, here the first Ozfest we did with Zach. It was at Milton Keynes in England. Okay. I think it was seventy thousand people. It was a, a XL4. Okay. And I don't remember what the PA was. I know Zach was already over the limit DB wise at front of house with his rig. But uh, but I remember just sitting here going, "What if this blows up? Oh no! What if it blows up? What if I hit that unmute button and it all blows up?" And we got through the show, and it didn't blow it up. It didn't blow up. And then I, that's when I stood and looked around and went. I could do this, mm -hmm. you know, but at that time I'd never done anything at that level and that was, you know, Zach believing in me, you know, yeah. and so like to me that was my next step to that level. And then after that, um, and I worked with Zach, we worked together for, uh, 
I still worked with a lot of New Orleans groups and stuff like that, and then uh, ended up starting with Evanescence in 03. And, um, and once again, Zach helped me get to this level, basically, and when I met up with Evanescence, this is where they were as well, so we just trucked on through. Yeah. Well, what a cool tour to be on. Um, it seems like a lot of things are coming full circle mm -hmm. for this, um, and it's kind of a, obviously, a tip of the hat and a tribute to the original members for that. Um, I'm going to kind of jump to the, uh, we'll, get, we'll get to the console and stuff. Um, as far as you, you, I know you said before you've had a hand in um, a lot of this and creating this. What was some of your process and what was some of your steps into creating and walk us through a little bit of what you've done for this, uh, for this tour and also with tipping a hat to the original band? Well, I mean, to me, this is an absolute honor to be here. You know, this is like a dream come true, all of that, yeah. you know? And uh, like, you know, for like one of my favorite bands of all time, you know, to be able to get to mix them, mm -hmm. that, you know, some, somebody that I look up to like Led Zeppelin, you know, it's just like, that's, and for what they did for all of that, you know, for the industry and for like all of it, from the technicality, the musicality, the, the hooks, all that stuff, yeah. and then and, and sonically, you know, and to me that's a once again, that this is my thing. This is what I do, and so much of like, so much of what they did, and they pioneered and created, you know, like with, between Terry Date in the studio and Vinny's vision behind the console as well, you know, and you know all of the band sonically, but I guess getting back to this. The fact that I got to meet all of the original guys, you know, and like, and was, and they were all just the coolest dudes, you know, and uh, just uh, always meant the world to me. And that, like, and the fact that they would come to shows that I was at, whether I was with Zach or someone else, ask if they could stand in front of house, which I thought was crazy. I'm like, yeah. of course you can. <laughs> but, you know, the fact that they, they, they appreciated my work, like that to me meant the world. It's like, wow my hero over here appreciates what I do. Yeah. So now, you know, years later, after everything, you know, that's gone on and stuff, to be able to come back and like give something back to that, to me, that's like, you know, I, I want to do this as if Vinny was still standing here like he always would be, you know, and going like, man, we created that, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I want to give back to them and then to the fans that never got to see this, yeah. you know, just hearing somebody say, thank you. I'm like, you're welcome. You know, this means so much on so many different levels to so many people. Yeah. So. Well, what well, was the last time they toured? 2001, I think. I mean, so, you know, for a lot of these people, it's going to be their, it's... Many people weren't born. Been many children born yes. between that time yes. period. <laughs> yes, you know, when I think that's a, a whole, that's an interesting thing that I've seen, even like with some of my friends coming, is now it's, my friends with their kids, mm. you know, and now their wife or her husband, and it's them getting to share that. Like, you know, it, it's like, oh wow, this means something to my parents, whether they like the music or not. You know, by the end of it, they see the energy of the whole thing, and I think it's a cool connection where people are like, wow, everybody's into this. You know, everybody's heart and heads into this yeah. for the right reason. Yeah. All right, the Midas Heritage D. Yes. Obviously, you didn't start out with this. What was your reasoning to getting the Midas? Did you look at other consoles? Um, no. You just knew? I know that this sounds better than anything else out there, and this band deserves the best. And okay. if this is the kings of heavy metal, we need the king <laughs> of consoles. Okay. So, uh, why do you feel like it sounds the best? Because it feels good. Okay. Because it feels good and it sounds good, mm. and that's the, when you grab that EQ and turn it, your brain goes, "I remember that. That's what it used to do." Mm. Wow! Instead of all these other desks, you just grab it. And it's like, yeah. "That's it." You know how far you can get. It's just like, but this, like, you there's a difference. It, it and like I said, just the workflow. It feels good, and that's the thing. Like to me, it's a performance. You know, I don't have any snapshots, no scenes, nothing like that. I tap my delays. I change my effects as I need just like they would with their guitar pedals. So I'm noticing there's not a bunch of extra, there is a screen here, but there's not a bunch of extra racks. How much native are you doing? Uh, waves, UAD, 
outboard. I don't see any of that. Nope. All none native? Of none of it. All of it in here. All of it in here running internally at 64-bit processing. I know some people here, they're just... Why, but like, the desk runs 64-bit internally. Wouldn't all the effects be operated to run at that? Nobody else's is. I don't know if Bercasti runs at 64-bit, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, it sounds fantastic. It, yeah, there's no outboard gear at all. Everything's just for tuning the PA. You know, that's that's all this, literally, that's all my systems engineer stuff from like here over. Yeah. But, you know, and so I've got this. And I've, I traveled with a Pro 2C for years. I okay. traveled with a Pro 1 for years, yeah. you know? And I mean, I found a case that I could put it in. It was 80 pounds, we could fly with it. And we did festivals around the world with that thing. It doesn't have to be this giant desk. You know, it's, and I don't know, I think, yeah, experiment, find your thing. Like yeah. my, my workflow from this comes from an analog background. Yeah. I like grabbing that knob and knowing that's the high mid frequency, always. Yeah. And, or whatever, it's just easier workflow and that's, I mean, we never used to have a lot of effects. We had like a drum verb, vocal verb, delay, maybe a pitch, yeah. you know? And so yeah. it's, when I had the Pro 2C, that's all I used. Mm. With this, I needed to expand and that was, that's why, you know, outgrown the Pro Series. Yeah. During the pandemic, I had, my two Pro Ones and my Pro 2C all hooked up together. I took all the side panels off of them and I mashed them together into this giant. Did you really? Yeah, it was just like this. Oh, I gotta see a photo of that. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, it became like this. I'll put that in here. <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, but that's what we were doing and I started doing live streams with that. Well, all of a sudden I had 18 effects because I had six on each. So then even after that, I'm like, well, I can't just go back to the Pro. I'm gonna need two desks. So then that's when I decided to jump to this. First it was on Evanescence, and Jim Rose uh, from RPM Dynamics sent me that one out. Um, I actually bought my first Pro 2C from Jim, and we've worked together for, I don't know, probably since uh, over a decade now. Okay. Um, and yeah, between him starting off at first mainly, and uh, Chase from Midas and all those guys, getting him back in touch with them was wonderful. And now having my systems engineer, Alex, and all the, the Midas team behind us, it's been fantastic. So, so I have a question. Yeah. How many inputs? Um, the desk has 144. Okay. And we have four open channels right now. Is now, it killing you that you haven't used those four? <laughs> no, no. It, and honestly, I mean, like... How many of those are redundant? None. None. That, so for the Metallica, Metallica show, we have 72 inputs of drums. Okay. Because we have two drum kits. Are you doing that tonight? Uh, no, just one drum kit tonight. Okay. Yes, so this half goes away. And then we have all the RF, like all, this is RF for the Metallica stuff, and effects return, so it's, but yeah, there's, not, and, and I'm using every input, there's nothing extra. Like it's, it's not just, it's not six guitar mics and eight snare mics or something. Like, okay. Yeah, it's just, Straightforward input. Speaking of drums, can you walk me through the drums? What do you, what do you, uh, what kind of kit are we doing? How many, I'm sorry, how many piece kit and uh, mics? He's, um, he's playing a Tama, uh, I believe this is a Star Series kit. Okay. Um, he had two kits custom made for this. I think the kick drums are 22, and then the rest are Vinny sizes, so it's 14, 15, he's got a 16, and an 18, and the gong drum is probably a 22 or something, okay. 20 or 22. Um, he's got, so that's his main kit. We've got uh, two mics in each uh, kick drum. Um, one's a Biodynamic, the TG-71, okay. um, and then a D6. Okay. And then on st snare top, Charlie wanted an SM-58, so we have an SM-58 up there. Classic mic. Yeah. Classic band. Uh, and then uh, Earthworks DM20s on snare bottom, the two ra uh, racks, the two floors, a D6 on a Kelly shoe inside the bass drum, or the gong drum. Um, there's 414s, um, I forget, the ones with the gold on them. Okay. Uh, I've got two of those in figure eight, one picking up the ride and the symbol above it, the other one picking up hi-hat and the splash, kind of trashy symbol above that. Okay and then the rest are in cardioid. Um, I've got another little Earthworks DM20 as an underhead for the center mic. It's just a little too far out of reach. But uh, other than that, um, 
we're using a Roland TD50. Okay. Um, and we actually got the original uh, samples from Vinny's estate. So they allowed us to use those. Awesome. So like, that was a cool thing. Like, to me, I always rely on the inputs, the actual mic. Yeah. And then we finesse those in, and it's almost just like that icing on the, that mm. little sheen where it's like, hmm, you know, just, once again, you take it away, and it's still a fantastic sounding kit. Sure. Um, but uh, and Abel is our drum tech. He's absolutely phenomenal, just like a great human being, but a gifted tuner and just like a beast of a drummer as well. So, like, it's actually really cool because our whole crew can play. So, you know, like, yeah, you know. You got a crew I, band going on? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I don't know if we have a name yet, but, uh, but yeah, they, you know, they can get through a couple songs and that's, once again, great. Um, and so, that's the drum kit. Uh, oh, the outputs of the TD50, those go to uh, eight channel um, Neve R&DI okay. eight. Um, and then out of there, it goes into a radial, the green Pro 8 DI as well for the outputs of that. We have a duplicate of all of this built for Metallica, once again, because we had to do this twice. Um, and then, what, that's about it. We got that, the Ike amplifier for okay. the baseboards uh, and the, for the thumper. That's pretty much the drum kit. Okay, what about, uh, are you doing live amps for guitars? Uh, so and bass? Yes, so <coughs> Rex is playing through at least four cabinets out of the five, maybe okay. all five, um, but he's, um, so he has live cabinets on stage. Zach has live cabinets on stage as well. Those are uh, Marshalls loaded with uh, 300 watt black label okay. EV speakers. Um, and those are mic'd with Royer R20, uh, 121s. Okay. Um, we're also using a two different Palmers, a PDI-09 and then a PDI-03, just a little speaker simulator box. It goes after the head, so that way if I lose a mic or something, I still have something else to go off of. Sure. For the Metallica shows, we're using ISO cabinets built by the box, uh, they're called the Box of Doom. <laughs> so I had four of those built, um, and we have two of those loaded with EV, Zach's EV speakers, uh, and I have another spare of those, and then I have a pair of vintage 30s in case we need those. Oh, cool. But, so for Metallica, since there's no uh, cabs on deck, that's what we're using there. And I use a blend of that in the Palmer. Got it. Okay. Um, and then R Rex has a crazy mighty bass rig, um, and it's um, basically it's three signals that we take out of his, two two D uh, two two DIs and then one uh, out of his radial. Um, we also have the, there's some um, during Planet Caravan he plays uh, on the original recording he played a flute part like an ascending and descending flute part that's delayed and all verbed out and stuff. So we got the original recordings of those and then we slowed them down and manipulated them to fit the show better now. And he has two um, hi-hat pedals that were remote, Yamaha hi-hat pedals, he remotely triggers those things. So that, that lives over in Bass World, that's coming off of Roland Sampler. We have a redundant backup for that. Uh, and then we have a Taurus 3, um, which is always fun. Uh, Philip uses a Telefunken M80. Okay. Um, on a cable. Okay. I was um, just going to ask as well. Are you, yeah. Uh, so cable for this, for okay, for the Metallica, we had to do a unique thing uh, okay. that Gerald, uh, our monitor engineer, came up with. And he's running a. Uh, he's running HD96 as well. Okay. Um, we were trying. We knew we were going to have to go wireless for Philip because it's a 320 foot circle that he's gonna be on. So just knowing how much he uses the cable and stuff, even for like wrapping around his head or just different, part of his stage moves and stuff. Yeah. It's all his comfort zone. I wanted to keep him in that. And so we ended up getting one of those little plug on transmitters and have that with a five foot cable running down to another Telefunken, so he can still have it. He's still got the feel, yeah. if he wants to, whatever, yeah. whatever he's doing, he can do that, and then he doesn't have to worry about dropping the mic. Yeah. Because we're like, what if it falls off the stage? How are we gonna find that? In the, like, but, uh, so yeah, so we did that, um, and Rex has a Beta 58 that he sings into. Zach's got an M80 with an opto gate on that. Um, 
There's a pair of side fills. Wex, Rex has uh, wedges, a uh, pair of wedges for like okay. kick, kick, snare, and bass. Yeah. Um, I already touched this thing. Uh, uh, oh, we also have the bass boards. Um, uh, Ike Amplification built us uh, eight of those, uh, eight, uh, four large and four smalls with the CFH logo on it. Um, and we also cool. got eight of those amplifiers with that as well. So um, for Metallica, we, we have six of those placed around the stage. The large ones he can actually stand on, and uh, and, it, and the other ones he can just put he put one foot on just for reference. Yeah. But there's no subs on deck, all right. So at least when he's in the stadium, he can go there and have the feel and like that connection. Yeah. Like you could tell if you're out of tune, if you're bending out of tune just from the vibrations of that thing, it gets uncomfortable. So it's yeah. it's just a cool reference for him sure. to give him yeah just a little more comfort in a foreign environment. Talk to me about your uh, your approach to sound check. Um, do you do? Is there a song that you do with it? Is there just peak noise? Uh, what's what's your approach to it? Well, when I'm tuning. Yes. Okay. When I'm tuning, now here I have I've been blessed to have Alex Hollander out here with me, so he takes care of the tuning here. Um, because in my situation, I somehow get stuck in like the you got five minutes, go. So when it's only that. It might just be pink noise. I'll maybe put three mics out, do an average of those three, do pink just to verify, and then sometimes just draw the curve and go. Yeah. That's in in this scenario. Um, in this scenario, pink noise is used for alignment, and then um, yeah, then after that, he's got a whole slew of uh, reference songs that he likes to listen to and stuff. But it's it's also nice. A lot of the people on stage have commented, they're like, the music's nice, it doesn't drive us crazy every day. So, you know, it's, but, uh, yeah, and also at the same time, like, even when tuning, I noticed, like, he doesn't crank the pink noise excessively loud. Yeah, it's just loud that. enough to get the picture, get the, get the coherency right, take the picture, turn it off. Nobody wants to hear that all day. It's only your favorite song, <laughs> you know, but, uh, but you know, even like that, and I noticed that like it makes a more comfortable day. It's easier to get nobody's yelling because it's blasting, you know, disrupting other people working and stuff. And yeah, um, yeah like th that. There you go. In a nutshell, I mean, yeah. So any any specific songs? No, I don't have like. I know the ones that he likes to play, and now I'm like, oh, maybe I'll use those. But yeah, I usually just do paint, draw yeah. it, and go. I like a linear system. Okay. You know, like uh, I like a. I don't like the big tilt on the bottom because if you got that on everything, then it's like putting a low shelf on every single channel. Yeah. Now you got to set there an EQ over top of that. Why don't you just flatten it out and put what you want where you want? Um, it was interesting when you were walking me through this stuff before and talking about the inputs, and it seemed there was a phrase you said, and it was I think I mentioned about being a little complicated. Oh, complex, not complicated. Com yeah. Yes. I love that. You know, it, like it's kind of. Yeah, it's like, there's a lot that goes into it. There's a lot of thought. To me, it's like, yeah, let's put all the emphasis, let's, let's do the thought process. Let's sit here and work this thing out and do this smart, do this right. The first time, you know, it's like, to me, these are guys are the best, so they deserve the best, you know, and every input counts. You know, it doesn't matter if it's the second hi-hat or the first hi-hat. Um, so, like I said, even getting to that thing, the complex, like, what we're trying to do is paint a picture of Pantera you know, for the audience. And these classic songs, they know these songs. They know the drum fills. They know the cymbal grabs. They know all the ride hits. They know the big snares. They know, and they, it's cool it, for people that haven't heard this, you know, in two decades to just look up and realize and have a connection and go, oh yeah, that's the band. You know, like that's what we're trying to do. And so to me, like I said, just like people air drumming Tom Sawyer, you know, by Rush or something with their eyes closed, you know every Tom hit. Yeah. It's the same thing with this, you know, like, and so delivering that as clear as possible, to, you know, that, that's, I wanted that clear, punchy with articulation, but at the same time, it's got a hit, you know, yeah. this being has a big impact. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, just it, mic selection on everything, it was all thought out. The way it's laid out on the desk, it's simple. It, it channels, the channels go to groups. The channels are controlled by VCAs. And it goes to the left, right, sub. Let me ask you this. Um, how do you find 
uh, how do you balance the paying homage to the original sound and also making it your own sound? Um, you know what? It's uh, like to me, it's just I'm just like I said. If Vinny was here, I'd want him standing here. You know, like they didn't have this PA back then. It wasn't invented. You know, like and like uh, so much has changed since then. Yeah. So it's almost it's a, to me it's like that. To me, even from the start of this, I said, you know what? I want to present this as the high def version of Pantera. You know, that's what it should be. The high def version of what they already did, which was already its own great sonic thing. But it's like, now we have more headroom. Yeah. Now the speakers are more linear. Now we have the subs go deeper. Now we have more control over them. You know, it's like, so let's bring all those modern elements. Even, you know, for people that are like, oh, it's heavy metal. You know, it doesn't matter. It's like, no, it matters a lot. You know, it's like, and once again, presenting this picture, right? Yeah. Um, like I said, complex not complicated there's a lot there's a lot of channels Love that. there's a lot of channels in there yeah but it's just like it's simple they're just controlled by these faders here and when he goes to the metallica drum kit i go then it's still just right here i don't have to jump through any other hoops or like i don't know you know that's um yeah that's uh i mean yeah in a nutshell there's some thoughts there so i had a few people ask some questions. And I'm gonna ask you these questions. The first one is, uh, let me pull this up. This first question is coming from Angel Graves. Okay. Um, he wants to know um, how you mix Rex's bass to pop out of the mix. He says it is so good. And he also sent me a picture of you guys together as well. <laughs> yes, there we go. So he says hi and he would like to know that. That's great, love Angel. Um, he, uh, Rex's tone, it's three channels. Um, there's, there's a clean channel and then he has uh, a pre and post dirty channel. Um, one's got more of the wah and those type effects like that. Um, and it's, on, like, it's, it's all him, like I mean, the, a major, most of it is like I do a blend of those three it's like the clean one that's going to the subs and I sneak that in there mm -hmm. but it's mainly it's mainly the tube DI's and he's got a lot of he's got an interesting signal chain in there he's got a lot of different gain stages and like little compression stages and stuff like that but uh but also a part of that is Rex and it's that attack and it's mm -hmm. that like he digs in, and here's the thing, he pushes, he pushes the envelope, like on all, which is great, like, it's always like, how do we get more out of it? How do we get a little more, you know, should we do, and, and it's cool, like, to see him experiment, you know, and like find different directions, you know, and like, but yeah, he's done so much on his end that, like out front, I don't, I don't use any parallel compression on it at all, it's just going straight to the left, right. Um, and I've got a little multi-band compression. That's probably maybe the biggest thing on the main DI channel. Um, just to cl keep it clear in case it gets a little bitey up top if he gets excited and digs in too much or whatever. So just, that's basically it. Okay, okay. Uh, next question is from Brian Harderswick. All right. Um, how important is stereo imaging in your mix? How important is stereo imaging in your... Um, I mean, for, uh, most of my mix is mono. So, like, mo it, most of my mix is mono, you know? I've got some delay stuff going on just to wind things out. But the majority, so like, I mean, because once again, the hi-hat. You don't want the hi-hat on the left side. If somebody's over here, and that's an integral part of the timing of the song. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I don't do a lot of spatial stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I pretty much, like, and then, do, 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 try to, like, yeah, it's mostly mono. Okay. Uh, the and next. How about this? Spatially, you know, how about this? Probably sp making space, I probably make more space on my EQ mm -hmm. than maybe some people do with pan, I don't know, with panning or something like that. Okay. Uh, this next one is from Brett Scoop. Um, is there anything you do every time you walk up to your PA or console? 
smile. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know. Look forward to see how much we can get out of this, you know, and see, like, see if we can get to the end of it, you know? Okay. Like, that's what we basically did in Europe. It was like, all right, this is the European tour to see how we get to the end of the PA every day. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think we did a good job of it. Okay. Um, what's another one? Um, what has changed in your tenure with the band to accommodate the different size venues? As far as um, nothing. Like okay. to, to me, I like okay. to me as I like I like to build a scalable system. Like I said, whether it's just a pro one or whatever. Yeah. You know, if there was a smaller version of this, we could use that. It would still be the same output. All none of this changes. Yeah. You know, so. Um, and so, you know, now we're carrying PA for this. Um, but like, I, like I said, I, I like everything to be scalable. So if it's stadium with Metallica, no backline, we're ready. Shed here, our own run full, ready. If we need to fly wherever, once again, complex, not complicated, do all the thinking ahead of time, consolidate, minimize your stuff. That way you got exact, I, I don't need a lot, but I want the best. You know, and so if we can just get that in a little repeatable package every day, yeah. then we have a more consistent, repeatable show. Yeah. Uh, his last cu question is, how has the band and their needs, desires, involvement evolved over the years? Um, well, technology's changed, you know, a heck of a lot. Like, in-ears weren't around, mm -hmm. you know, like, the, all right, yeah, I mean, gee, the last time Pantera toured, it was, you know, it was giant prism system, you know, full, giant side fills and everything, like it, wedges everywhere. Philip had like four or six in an arch with two butt fills and it, like, and it, now now it's a d different game, you know, like now Philip has in-ears and, you know, and of course recognizes how much easier it is for him to perform without having to fight. He doesn't have to get over everything else and the symbols and all that and everybody else wants and needs. So that is cleaned up tremendously, you know. Zach, Zach's, Zach doesn't even use wedges. Zach's, like Zach like, sometimes just listens off the house. Like every now and then he'll comment like on this love, on a delay, he's like, man, I like that delay you're doing. I'm like, you're listening to that up there? He's like, yeah, I can hear it. I'm like, so yeah, he's just incredible. So like the subs, you know, even there's a little kick, you know, in there and there's some of the tours. Um, but so that's stuff that's changed. Probably, you know, stay, yeah, stage volume coming down since then. Um, drums, he's got a, a thumper, a, a thumper. He's got subs underneath him. And he's got a wedge back there for some snare. But it's not the big old Texas headphones like yeah. it used to be blowing into everything, yeah. too. Yeah. All right, another question. I am brand new into audio engineering and would one day love to be in your shoes. What can I do to one day be mixing for a band like Pantera? Aww. Yeah, uh, stick with it. Learn your craft, you know, like stick with, you know, and be passionate about it. You know, like, uh, and find people that you look up to, find people like, that you respect. Like, it, it was so, you know, when I first started touring, I had to find a direction, you know, and uh, here you go. Here's an audio story. On my first tour that I ever did on um, Van and Trailer, we were sleeping on the floor at Pepper Keenan's house and uh, from Corrosion and Conformity. And we were hanging out and he was just chatting at me like, you're just getting into this, blah, 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 blah. And he said, look, man, you need to listen to Big Mick. He said, we went on tour with Metallica with COC and I'm telling you, the guy's got an ear. You need to learn from him. Hmm. And I said, all right. And that was 99. There's no internet, there's no this and that. So I got whatever mix magazines, any of that stuff, any that I could read, just looking at pictures, researching this and that, and then finally connecting and meeting him on uh, Ozfest and then staying in touch. He wouldn't always give me the answer, but he would lead me in the right direction where maybe even a couple months later I would go, oh, there it is. That's that aha moment. And like, so, so many times, so like I'm forever grateful for that, you know, and yeah, find somebody that you, you know, like that you respect, you know, and uh, 
and even, you know, everybody, it's all a matter of taste. So, you know, just finding engineers that you like and trying to figure out that, that to me is a huge part of it. Yeah. Um, but also, I mean, I'm a, music, I'm a guitar player. I, I, I play for fun, I just know how to play my stuff, you know, but it's still like, but it's, it helps me connect, you know, with the other, but I start off on drums as well, so it's kind of like, knowing a little bit of all of it, I'm not a master of any of it, you know, but it still lets me communicate with the artist, you know, and just, just figure out how to get the best yeah. for, for them, you know. Well, let me ask you this, I know a lot of people look up to you in, uh, as an audio engineer, who do you look up to? Who are some of your mentors? I mean, once again, Big Mick, absolutely. Um, just so many. Uh, Big Nobby, Nixon Tool. Um, so many guys. Greg Price, Nixon and Ozzy. He's now doing Metallica. Um, Brad Maddox, phenomenal. Uh, uh, now we're on the spot. I mean, just everybody. <laughs> Bill Chappelle, sure. uh, you know, like. Sure. Love those guys. Let me ask you this. There's a Kirk Kelsey walking around here. Fantastic engineer. What was the uh, best piece of advice you've gotten from one of your mentors? I don't know. E even one of my instructors. How about the, one of my instructors at recording school uh, that I looked up to? He used to run Mix Magazine three years ago. Uh, Kevin Becca. Um, I saw him at the AES convention the next year after I graduated. And I was chatting him up about some Sennheiser 409 U3s, and I'm like, I found a deal on three of them. What do you think? And he's like, Well, Eddie, you're just getting started. I think maybe you should save your money instead of buying mics. And I'm like, Anyway, but but the fact that he that he then he said, You know what? He goes, I'm so happy you're sticking with it. And it made me think, I'm only a year into this. Yeah. How many people don't? Yeah. So to me, that's like one of the, like even just that, like wow, you're sticking with it. I'm like, Well, of course I am. I'm. I'm just getting started. I'm still trying to figure out what I'm doing, you know? But that, like, maybe that is a piece of advice to pass that, like, stick with it. It's such a broad feel, like audio. And just like, if that's your passion, there's, I think there's a job for everybody. Like, you know, from any side of it, you know? System side, this side. Text stage side, anything, RF side, networking side, I can't even spell DHCP, you know, but, uh, you know, but it's important. And so, yeah. Well, sounds like they're uh, banging away. Uh, I won't take up too much of your time. Thank you so much, truly, for, uh, for this. Thanks, if man. If people want to get a hold of you, how can they uh, get a hold of you or follow you on social media? Are you on social media? I don't have any social media. Okay. Well, uh, then you got to come to one of the shows. Check it out. There we go. Yes, come to front of house. Awesome. Well, like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Or if you have any questions for him, type in below. Bro, thank you so much. Thanks, man. Yeah. Okay.